In this tutorial, we'll learn how we can use NavMesh for pathfinding. Hey guys, it's me, Apurbo. Let's get back to the video. What we will learn in this video? We'll learn how to bake a NavMesh, how to climb stairs, how to use NavMesh agents, what are areas in NavMesh, how to make your agents jump, and how to make your agents drop, and so much more. In Unity, we already have a scene ready to use for our pathfinding. I just have a capsule called player, a ground and two cubes for our obstacles. So now let's open our navigation window or our nav mesh window. So in order to open the nav mesh or navigation window, we need to go to the window, AI and navigation. Now, as you can see, it opens a window. We'll select the bake option and click on bake. But as you can see, nothing happens. Because in order for the nav mesh to bake a nav mesh surface, we need to mark the object as static. So how do we do that? Let's select our ground and go back to our inspector. And as you can see, right beside the name, we have a checkbox called static. And I'm just going to tick that. So after marking the ground as static, I'm, go I'm going to move back to navigation window and hit on bake. As you can see, it bakes our navigation and we can identify that by this bluish color on our ground but as you can see none of the obstacles are cut out so if i move the player it's just gonna go right through the obstacles and that's because the obstacles aren't marked as static so i'm just gonna select both of the obstacles and mark them as static and rebake our navigation mesh and as you can see as soon as i do that there are some holes cut out for the obstacles. Now we have a, some sort of nav mesh surface going on. Now let's make our agent to go with it. So I'm just going to select my player and I'm going to add a nav mesh agent component. In order to move in our nav mesh, I already have a script ready. So I'm just going to open that script. And as you can see, it's nothing complicated, it's pretty simple. I'm using the nav mesh, so I'm gonna import the unity engine.ai library and then I have a reference to my nav mesh agent and a transform point. And in the start, I'm getting the nav mesh agent from the attached component, and then in the update, I'm just setting the destination of our nav mesh agent to the point position. So let's select our player and add the nav mesh script to our player. And as you can see, now I need a point transform. So I already have a point transform ready. So I'm just going to enable it. And as you can see, it's, it's nothing complicated. It's just a circle with a smaller radius. And I'm just going to drag and drop it in our nav mesh script. And then I'm going to hit play and move to our scene view. And as you can see, if I move the point, the agent correctly moves to that point's location. And if I move it behind the obstacle, as you can see, it avoids the obstacle and goes around it. Now, Let's see how we can go upstairs and move from one area to another or drop from a higher point. So for that, I already have some stairs and elevated platforms created. So I'm just going to enable them. Now I know that this might seem similar to other tutorials. That's because in order to explain how nav mesh works, I'll need all of this. So does other channels that have a tutorial on nav mesh. That's why it looks a lot similar. Trust me, if I had any better way of explaining, I do that. But I think it's the best way to explain NavMesh and that's why I'm using this methods. As you can see, because we have new obstacles or objects in our scene, we need to rebake our NavMesh. For that, let's just mark all our objects as static. Since I have all of my ground objects or my obstacles under the environment empty game object, I'm just going to select the environment and mark it as static and select yes change children to apply the changes to all of the children's. Now that everything is marked as static, let's go to our navigation window and hit bake again. As you can see, it already baked a perfect area for our agent to work on and we can immediately try out our new level. So I'm just going to play the game and go back to our scene view. If I just move the point, as you can see, the player or the nav mesh agent actually follows the point and it climbs stairs and slopes very easily. If you are enjoying the video, take a second to like the video and another second 
to subscribe to the channel. Now let's check some of the settings that are on the bake section. So first of all, we have our agent radius. So what this does is actually tells the radius or the width of our agent. Again, this is not changing the actual agent. This is actually for baking the nav mesh with this pre-built settings. So when baking nav mesh, you can have more controls of how you want to bake the nav mesh. And we can also change the agent settings on the nav mesh agent. And this window or uh, the settings that are here, it's only for baking the nav mesh. So we can change the agent radius. We can also change the agent's height. We can change the max slope. So it's in degrees. Currently it's set to 45. So if I just decrease the radius and hit, as you can see, our agent now can't climb this slope. That's because it's greater than 30 degrees. Next, we have step height. That means our stairs. So if I just let it to something very low, like 0 0.05 and hit bake as you can see now our agent can not climb the stairs so I'm just gonna go back to our default settings so these are just some basic bake settings now let's learn how to jump between distance areas so what do I mean by that as you can see I have a platform here that's disconnected from our nav mesh we can only go to that area from here to there but currently our agent can't jump so how do you fix that as you can see in the big settings we have under the section generate off mesh links we have drop height and jump distance we'll focus on the drop height later but for now let's focus on the jump distance currently it's set to zero that means we cannot jump from any area. Let me just set it to something else like 5 and hit bake. As you can see, now there are some lines created showing that you can jump from here to there and from there to here. Now let's play our game to see if it actually works. So let's move up the stairs and stand here. And if I just move the point to that location, as you can see, it jumps to that location. Now we can easily jump between our nav mesh baked surfaces if it's within the distance of our jump distance. Now let's check out what drop height does. It's basically the same thing as jump distance. If I wanted to jump from here to the ground, currently I cannot jump but if I just input some value in our drop height, let's say for 5 and I play the game, move up the stairs and take the point to the ground as you can see the agent actually drops from the platform to the ground. Previously, it would use the closest path to there, which was either going with the stairs or with the slope. Under that, we have, we have the advanced settings. And as I've said before, this is that is not our focus today. So we're not going to bother our minds with this advanced stuff. Next, I'm going to take a look at our agent settings. So if I just move back to the inspector and uh, check out our nav mesh agent, the first settings that we have is the agent type. So currently it's humanoid and if I just click on open agent settings or go to our navigation window and move back to agents, we can create multiple agents here. As you can see, it's, uh, currently I have I only have the default which is humanoid agent but I can easily create another agent, rename it and set different values for that agent so I can have different types of agents. The next is base offset then next settings we have is the steering settings so these are pretty self-explanatory we have speed that determines how fast our agent moves we have angular speed that determines how fast our agent will rotate or move around the corners we have acceleration we did which determines how fast the agent will start moving we have stopping distance currently set to zero that means how far from an object the agent will start stopping and then we have auto braking and then we have something called obstacle avoidance currently we're not gonna bother our minds with the obstacle avoidance then we have the pathfinding section which is auto traverse of mesh links so what auto traverse of mesh links means is what we did when we jumped from this area to that area currently it's automatic but if you want to have more fine tool control then 
you will have this setting disable and you will handle it manually but we're not gonna do that in our video then we have auto repath so that means calculate the path automatically and then we have area marks which is going to set to everything but if you go to our navigation window and in areas you can create different types of areas let's say sand i can make this agent work on everything except sand so this agent will not be able to work on sand but i might create another agent which will be able to work on sand so that's what area marks means so how can we set that sand area so if i go to the object tab in our navigation window and if i just select the ground and as you can see i have navigation area currently it's set to walkable but i can select it to sand that that's it for this video if you want to learn how to create ai for your games make sure to go and watch this video next